Okay, I just made it live. I am um, just checking out the quality real quick because it seemed a little off. All right, I don't think there's any issues with the quality. I think just the preview is only letting me um, preview in low quality in my editor here, basically. But when I went to the, the live stream, it looked like it was at full 1080. Um, so I'm just going to wait for this countdown just to hit zero, and then I will begin. And I do have the chat up, uh, but keep in mind there's a probably about a 15 second delay. All right, that's that's close enough. Um, so basically what I'm working on is naturally fishnet. The thing I'm going to do right now is I recently added the ability to serialize, um, automatically serialize properties, but it looks like something is being picked up that shouldn't be. I think it was an audio clip. Um, so someone basically gave me some custom user data and the audio clip, a unity type tried to serialize when it shouldn't have. So now I just need to find where uh, um, I had a bunch of, this is this is some of my scripts where I like basically do test on, where I need to do like a really quick test. I just throw it in the root because why not, I guess. So let me drag over Visual Studio here. Okay. Um, okay. I'm not finding what I'm expecting to be finding. Where is it? Give me one second. All right, well, there's the file. No. Nope. Strange. So part of the issue with um, just throwing in random files to test things is they're not really not really labeled. Um, okay, so I'm looking for a script called test bug. Let's find that real quick. What? Am I in the right project? I am in the right project, but where'd my script go? Oh no, I think I deleted it. It's fine. I have backups. I'll just make another one. I honestly don't know where where that went. Um, so let's see. Test C sharp. I'm just gonna make a new script here. Um, I'm gonna call it my SO. The issue was specifically with, with scriptable objects. Um, I don't think that's a problem now, but so I'm just going to do this here, public audio clip, uh, ACC get set. Because like I said, the issue was with properties. You'll probably see what's going to happen real soon here. Um, okay. Um, I guess I'll just sync ferret. If I don't make it a type that's to be networked, then it won't um, try to serialize it, of course. All right, so I should expect an error. 
unless I fixed it on accident. <laughs> I was messing with it last night. I don't know if I actually fixed it or not. Um, so let me just do a quick test here. This is something I've been slowly organizing the code gen, making it neat, things of that nature. It's going to take a while because it's not really a priority, but as I work on it, I make it neater. Um, so I'm looking for create sync there. And this method here, nope, it should actually be this one here. So I'm just making sure that it actually is hitting the serializer, which it should be. Yeah. All right, so it's hitting the serializer. Um, let me open up .peak and take a look at where it could be going wrong. It's just going to take a second for that to come up has like this really long splash screen and then the app itself takes a while to load. I don't know why, um, it's by JetBrains, you know, most people are familiar with JetBrains and everything, but when I use IL Spy, uh, I believe by Microsoft, it's like instant. So I don't know why this is so slow, but whatever. Okay, so I'm trying to open the generated writer right here. Um, so it's writing the booleans, basically if it's null or not, but it's not writing the properties. Um, something tells me that the code isn't in here. I mean, it's right there. It should have written something. So let me just see what I did wrong here. Um, so I didn't fix it overnight. I, I think I actually broke it more overnight. Um, what happened is basically I kind of left it in like a half finished state and I thought I did enough to where I would like remember where I was at, but it didn't. Uh, it's no big deal, really. I just gotta finish up here. Okay, so let's see. Try create sync there. All right, this is the part that's firing off the text. Um, let's go to this. If type ref. I'll just do this. Bool print equals type ref dot name equals my so. If print. This is easier than stepping through, in my opinion, because um, depending on the Unity versions, it might be multi threaded or might not be multi threaded, and not great things happen when you add breakpoints. All right, A, B, A, A, B, C. Um, so it is eventually getting there. I'm basically fixing code gen. Uh, this, is, this is the least fun part of all of this. So it is getting to this part, uh, which means it's gonna hit the create writer, which means I know it's gonna hit this because it's a class. Right there at the class, so it should be hitting that. Um, which means it's probably hitting this here. So let's do this.
I think it's excluding something, which means, well, it doesn't really mean anything because it's excluding the int, which it shouldn't be, um, but it could be excluding the unity type, which it should be. But anyway, uh, let's see. If print debug log field def dot, um, I'll just do it by the name plus exclude. This stuff's pretty boring, but uh, you know, bugs bugs are you know pretty important to work out. Okay. So it's hitting it for sure. It's just not getting the fields. Um, that's because of this part right here. Well, it's also a property, so it's not gonna get any fields because everything I have in that class is properties. Um, but yeah. Okay. So, um, I just want to make sure that it is indeed hitting the properties, not the fields. I am 99% sure it is. It is, okay. So, I'm not really too concerned about this part uh, because I know if the properties get working, then this will be working too. So I'm just going to do that and get rid of this debug. And um, let's find out what part of this is messing it up. I'm going, I'm not sure which one it is. So I'm going to delete this, clear my console, save. What you're basically looking at is I have um, a thing here that gets all the public properties but you can exclude certain types um, and, or you can exclude certain assemblies like things that shouldn't be automatically generated. So it looks like the excluded auto serializer types is the one that's throwing it off, um, which it shouldn't be. So I think what's going on there I'm not really sure actually. Uh, oh, pff, duh. Okay. This is, whoops. Basically I'm saying if the type passed in equals the type that is, that's passed in, then it shouldn't be included. So that's obviously a mistake. Um, so let me fix that. That's what I was looking for right there. So that's the error that the person got. Um, can't be deserialized because there's no default constructor. Um, it's a unity type. I have no control over that. I can't modify it. So I need to exclude them from serialization. Um, let's see if it works with the other part. Going to clear it out. Save, try again. Okay. So it still did not exclude it. Um, not sure why, I'll just do a quick check here.
why is it um oh yeah debug.log it duh okay so um what you're seeing here is basically what I pass in is I, I pass in the Unity um, Unity assembly name VIM um, translation, please. <clears throat> okay, so the string is Unity Engine, which is what I'm trying to exclude. And I see that it does start with uh, Immunity Engine. So I should be excluding it, but it's not. Um, <clears throat> let me just make sure here. Maybe it is excluding it as the writer, but not the deserializer. Let's just do a quick check. Or, you know, the serializer, but not the deserializer. Okay, so it is excluding it. Um, there's also something else, which is weird. I have something that should exclude it anyways because it's a Unity component that's not supported. Um, no, not everything is keyboard-based here. I just use a lot of hotkeys, that's all. So this is this code is actually working. So I'm gonna get rid of all these comments here. Because that code is good, it's working. Um, the other part that is not working, I'm trying to think of where that code is. Let's see, I think it's under, I'm pretty sure it's under the current project, unity engine dot component. Yes, perfect. This is probably going to spam my console. Uh, so let me clear it out. Okay, there's not too much stuff in there. That's not too bad. Audio clip is in there. Great. Or is that just this here? Where is this coming from? No, it is coming from this. That's perfect. All right. Um, I could have sworn that it inherited from Unity Engine dot component. I can't search it, of course. Uh, audio clip, AC, let me just do this. See if I can jump into the met metadata here. Oh, it inherits from object under the Unity namespace. Got it. Well, that's frustrating. So this method here is supposed to see if something can be generated for that type. Um, it says is valid serialized type, which should probably be renamed. Like I said, I'm, I'm reworking the Cogen because when I made Fishnet, this was my first time actually working with Cogen and it was um, challenging because there's no documentation or anything and it could definitely be better. Okay, yeah, so what this does, um, this method basically tries to find out what type it'd be serialized as, like a, like a class, a structure, um, 
enum, etc. And it checks here that if there's already a serializer for it, it says it basically says that it one already exists, and then return serializer type invalid um, because this is only called when it needs to create a new serializer. So if I have a a type like a Unity type that's already supported, like um, like one I already made for example, like uh, in the in the writer class or reader class, this will pull it and throw. Um, so that means this is only going to hit if one doesn't exist yet, which means presumably this is going to be only for created types, um, <clears throat> which is what I want. So to rename uh, applies only to types which do not have a user made or included serializer. Okay. Oh, it does inherit from Unity Engine dot object. Oh, let me check something. Oh, I messed up. I think. Okay, I didn't mess up. I see the problem though. Um, before I didn't use the support scriptable objects, and I think what happened is rather than object td dot is this particular one, um, before I had object td dot inherits from basically saying if it's a Unity object, don't try to serialize it. But the problem with that is it will not work with scriptable objects um, because those ultimately do inherit from it. Um, I kind of think I can still get rid of this stuff. You know, there's only one way to find out, right? I'm pretty sure I can get rid of it. That's not something you really want to hear. Um, I'm pretty sure I can get rid of it without certainty. But, uh, so I'm going to change this and then I'm going to test it, of course. Okay, this is actually good. Um, let me just do that again so I can get rid of some of that debug. This is actually the expected behavior. Uh, so you got audio clip is not a supported type. Use a supported type or provide a custom serializer. Um, and then you're gonna get this error and then this error and this error, etc. cetera. Uh, you're supposed to get those errors. It's basically telling you that, hey, you know, you put, you put your audio clip in here uh, in your class that you want to serialize, but it's not, it's not doable. Uh, and there's not really any way to sterilize an audio clip. Uh, so there's two options you can do here. You could do uh, system dot non serialize. Let me clear this out. Which it's not valid on a on a property here. Um, so we're just going to change it to a field. But before I do, let me comment that out and confirm that the error also throws on fields like it should. Perfect, it does. So let's make it non serialized and save. <clears throat> okay, no more errors. Perfect, that means it's working. Now there's a problem with this. Um, let's say that this is in fact a scriptable object and you do want this serialized. Like this is something you have in your inspector that you want to serialize it, right? Um, given that fishnet supports properties now and fields it doesn't really know if this is something you intend to serialize or not um oh this is because it does um inherit from scriptable object so we're going to come back to that in a second but all we got to do here is it's going to generate an error because it's going to try and serialize the audio clip 
but all you have to do is do this. There you go. So that's kind of like a secret secret menu. Um, you can add Cogen exclude if you can't mark it as non-serialized and that will also work. The Cogen will completely ignore it. Uh, that works on methods, uh, classes, fields, properties, etc. So if you just want, if something's being processed by, processed by Cogen and you're like, stop it, you can put this on top of it. Uh, now we got the other issue where it's trying to serialize this and it cannot because it says it's a scriptable object. Um, that's because of what we just did here. So I would bet if I just change this to is, and now it's working, but of course the audio clip thing is throwing a fit uh, because I don't have that as non-serialized. Um, so let's go ahead and put that as cogen exclude. We know that bit works. That's that's good. And actually, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave that there just in case. So we can't exclude things that inherit from object unity engine dot object because uh, let's say let's go let me pin some stuff and close out of things here <clears throat> because this itself is obviously my class it's not unity made um, but it inherits from scriptable object which inherits from unity object which means that it's ultimately going to inherit from object and it's going to say that it cannot serialize. Um, so I need to think of a way to be smart about this, I guess. Um, I have an idea. What if we do, what if we do this? If, uh, let's go down here, just copy, copy this. Okay, so what if it, um, I'm actually going to save this real quick. There we go. When this method runs a lot, um, like if this was called only every so often, it wouldn't make a bit of difference because I'm basically caching this. Uh, but this method's on whenever you have a lot of stuff as your project gets bigger, it's going to run more and more and more. So that's why why I'm caching it here because it could make a difference in the long run. I don't know if it will, it could be a micro optimization, but you know, if I wasn't, if I wasn't describing it here, this change would only take me like five seconds. So why not do it? It could prove beneficial in the long run. Okay. So what we're going to do is if it inherits from unity object type, so that's unity engine dot object and um, let's see string um unity assembly name equals unity engine it's actually there's some capitalization in there but it's no big deal so let's say uh now we need the nth uh, assembly name length equals dot length and I'm going to do if inherits from object and if, you know, I'm going to say one more thing. Um, what is it under? I think it's under module dot assembly dot name. There we go. Nope. Didn't like that. 
there we go. It's name dot name under the assembly definition. I don't I don't know why, but whatever. Uh, so if object assembly name dot length is greater than actually I have this code already. Um, Just going to do this because <laughs> I have this code already. Um, I don't really need the array right now. Okay, so let's go back to this and then just do uh, why is that bull? Oh, oh, here we go. I had to make it a extension. There we go. I should probably make this a constant somewhere, uh, just in case I want to use it again. I, I probably will do that after I get this working. All right, so we got all these lovely errors here. Close. Um, so it's a scriptable object, which previously was not working. Let's test it out again. All right, so this time it's only throwing for um, audio clip instead of the scriptable object. So I would say that's probably working. Uh, let me just code gen exclude it. Okay, it worked, it didn't clear the errors. So let me just show you again that it is working. I saved, made a change. Great, it's working. Um, let me go ahead and make that a constant that fixes that bug. Code is always a pain in the butt. Like it's it's sometimes easy and quick. And I wouldn't say that was hard, but it was annoying. I hate working in code I understand it. I just don't like it. Um, so I need to decide where to put this. Um, <clears throat> And this is where things get messy because I'm lazy. I just pick like the closest file that, that kind of made sense in my general helper. It's kind of like my junk drawer of Cogen files. Um, there's the actual source of FishNet isn't like this. It's just a Cogen. And this is why I, I say that I need to gradually rework it. Uh, like, I don't even know what this is for. Is this even used? No, what? I'll come back to that in a second. Ugh. Okay, that is used. Okay. Um, also something I learned a while ago, I suppose, but it's still it's still something good to know. And this might be untrue um, after things pass through the, the JIT and assembly compiler and all that. But if you assign, like a method reference is a class type, right? So the default value is going to be null. Um, but here I am also assigning null. So if, if you actually do this where it assigns null, it's going to put it in the constructor that it's going to assign it to a null object, even though it's already null. 
Um, so you're kind of wasting performance by doing that. At least that's how it shows up in the IL. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to compile that way once it once it hit, goes into ASM. Um, so if anyone knows for certain, I am curious. Not not curious enough to check myself, but I am curious. So anyway, we got the error here. Let's just fix that real quick. Uh, excluded general helper dot. I didn't make it a constant, did I? Nope. Dot unit. There we go. All right, this is a good time to back it up. I don't know why my... I don't know why my backup thing says there's 79 changes because there's only... Oh my God. Okay, I see. I You guys can't see my fork, but it said there was 79 changes and I didn't see... 79 changes, so I was like, uh, what? But I now see them. They just kind of appeared all at once. All right. Um, <clears throat> fixed wrong types being, let me just, fixed uh, unity, fixed unsupported unity engine types being picked up by Auto serialization. Okay. Close that. Ah, shoot. I gotta force push it. No big deal. I know you guys can't see what I'm doing. I have, I have it on a different screen. Um, not really any reason. It's just just stays over there. But I just pushed it up. Um, so let me check something. Okay, so we're going to pull this over here. Let's see what we got. So we got two more bugs. Um, this bug... It's just a graphical issue. It's not hurting any of the gameplay, but it is nonetheless something that has to be fixed. Uh, it, it basically, uh, the predicted object is not, the smoothing on it's not calculating the proper rates. Um, how's it going, Dayham? This isn't per se for new people or experienced people. I am just working on fishnet live for the heck of it that's all it is it's not a tutorial i am talking as i go describing what i'm doing and maybe providing some tips along the way uh but that's all it is but anyway so this again is a graphical bug uh it's a very small one too it does need to be fixed but not right now so i'm gonna go back to the issues um this is another bug which as it says, if you set a sync fair value at edit time, it can create a no ref exception because the sync fair is not yet initialized. This is again, a very, very, very small bug. Um, it's occurring because the sync fair is initialized um, at runtime. So if you set them, if you set them here and in the editor, they're not yet initialized and you'll get a null reference exception. Um, just to show you, you know what? I didn't actually test to make sure the SO was working, did I? I should probably do that. Um, let me make this a new class using my SO. Da, da, da. Going down here, make a new class. This is going to be a network behavior because it has the sync there. Um, override on start server. I'm going to do uh, my so equals new no equals scriptable object dot create instance my so 
basically making a new instance of it. You're not supposed to call equals new object on scriptable objects. Uh, I'm going to do my so dot my int equals one, I suppose. Um, let me change it up a tiny bit here. My int property. And I'm going to make call this my int field because these were the two changes is uh, we wanted property serialization. So let me just test that out. So my int property, we're just going to change it to two. And we're going to do my so dot my int field equals one. And we're going to do override on start client um, debug dot log my so dot my int field plus comma space my int property. All right, so let's try it out. Uh, we're going to do it as host first, which should work because it's host. Um, yep. Yeah. I got to I got to add the object to the scene. I'm also going to disable the um, auto start here. Okay, server client all right, so those are the right numbers. Now I just need to make sure it works as a client as well. Or client only. Hey MK, how's it going? I have another editor opening up right now on the other screen. It's catching up because I had a bunch of stuff I've done since I've opened it. All right, uh, so again, client server, it's gonna be one, two, that's the right values. Hit play on this one, just the client. We got a freaking desync here, it's not really a big deal. Um, all I gotta do is just click rebuild default prefabs. <laughs> we still got a desync. Um, Probably because I didn't stop this file first. That's a symlink thing. It's a pain in the butt to do to deal with, but just how it is, I guess. Perfect. Uh, so it's working on client and client host. So let's close out of that. Get rid of it. We're good. Now that we're tested, let's carry on with what I was doing. Uh, I said before about the sync fair problem when you edit it when you modify a sync ver at edit time. It's not actually hurting anything. It just throws an annoying error. So uh, let's see if it works on any type. It. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> that worked. So maybe I'll try a class type. It's not showing up because I have to make this serializable. Uh, still working. I, I maybe if I do it in the inspector. <clears throat> I'm trying to reproduce the bug right now. Uh, this supposed to be an override. Yes. Is it 
public? No, it's protected. Okay. If break things, then unset break things and um, mt equals new. All right, let's see if that does it. Like I said, this is a reported bug and I'm trying to cause a break. Got it, perfect. Let's see if I can do it with an int just to make things a little bit easier. I don't know if that's going to actually do anything that way, but we'll, we'll try. Cool. All right. So that worked. Um, let me hop into the old trusty code gen again, or the, the IL, and see what's going on. Um, so I already forgot what I called it. Using my SO going to decompile it. This is why, and I'm not saying they didn't give me enough information. They probably did give me this information and I probably did not put it in here. Um, I'm going to bet that, that that was on me. But this is why, give me as much information as possible when trying to rep reproduce a bug or when you get a bug, that way I can, you know, get right into verifying that the bug exists and then fixing it. All right, so on validate, um, <clears throat> this is where it's having issues. So there's a couple things I could do here. Um, I could make it so that if it's within an editor function, then simply don't um, overwrite the sync value, but that might not be good for at runtime because this might be desired at runtime. Plus there's going to be a ton of editor methods I have to consider. Plus I have to consider methods that are called from editor methods and that's just not gonna work. Um, so that's not even an option. That's, gonna, that's just no. So the real, realistically, <clears throat> what would be good Huh. I'm trying to think, I mean, I know ways I could do it, but I don't know. I'm trying to think of ways I could do it that won't actually impact the performance. This is a tough one. Because I could, I can't really do like an if um, editor application is running or application is running. Um, like if I were to drop it like right above here and then only do this if the application is running because I know it would be generated at that point. Um, because, I mean, one, it's a little bit more difficult inside uh, CodeGen knowing basically we have what's called um, the instructions here. And I would have to add that instruction between these two things right here. But if any reason there was like something else after this that conflicted with the in instruction I injected, it could very easily go bad. Um, and it's very hard to account for all those situations. So injecting the, the check is probably not ideal because I was going to consider doing that if uh, only if editor instead of doing it in builds because I can actually do that. I can have, have certain things applying code if building or if editor only. Um, <clears throat> you know why? I could add a null check. No, I can't, I can't, maybe I could. That's also risky, but I could maybe do that.
I'm gonna try something real quick. I don't know if it's going to work. Yeah, so I can't I can't use that on it uh, because it's a property. It might work. It might work inside Cogen because this is referencing the property, but in Cogen it's actually going to be referencing the set method. Um, this is a good good opportunity to open up this. Okay, change this to release. Um, IL All right, uh, public Whoops, there we go I'm doing all kinds of things wrong here. There we go. Oh, you can't do it anyways because you're assigning a value. It has to be like a method. Um, That does work, but that's a method. I wonder if I could do that on the accessor method. Um, so like your suggestion is something I considered, but you can't actually add defines using Cogen. So that kind of makes it impossible. Um, Let's get rid of, actually, let's keep that. Let's look at the code that was generated. Uh, so it's loading arg zero, which is basically saying um, this, which if you look in, in here, uh, you can see it's saying this right here. That's what load arg zero is. Like if I click it, well, it's not gonna show me an IL, but I, I know that's what it is. And it's loading the field uh, right here. And then, it's calling dupe, which I don't exactly remember exactly what that does. Um, I think it has something to do with the null reference, but basically if it's true um, for has value, then it's going to jump down to here where it will load the string and then call the method afterwards. Otherwise it's going to, uh, see this code's weird because I don't know why it's, oh, it's because I have it as a, uh, no, that doesn't make sense. I'll tell you why this code looks weird to me. And so the pop basically means you're taking it off. See, it says right there, you're taking it off the stack. Uh, so if something has like a return value, you're taking that value off the stack and you're basically discarding it. That might be what the question mark is doing because it might be like a null check. And it's saying, okay, take the result and get rid of it, and then return, which is exit the method. Uh, so that might be why that pop is there. But let's see if I can mimic this behavior. Um, let's get rid of this. If this doesn't work, I'm just going to basically say I'm not supporting this because it's not really a feature. It's not really a bug per se. It's um. It's something the developer can very easily avoid, and it's only something that help, happens under like very specific conditions. 
So I'm gonna try to fix it, but if I cannot, I'm not going to worry about it because this is such a silly little tiny thing. Um, so let me go to the project. Yeah, I know I got errors there. Hey, what's up? Is it is it tarmac? It's tarmac, right? That's what like I've always wondered if I was saying that in my head right. Let's do this. Okay. Um, okay, replace get sets. I don't even remember what these things do. I mean, I have descriptions. Oh, okay. I know what this is doing now. Okay, cool. Uh, it is tarmac. All right. Yeah, I haven't looked at this code for a very, 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 very long time. Um, but that's what the comments are for. Because that's actually what made me be like, oh, yeah, that's what it does. So it frustrates me when people don't add comments, and that's why. Uh, all right, so let's see. Um... I don't, it's probably gonna be a set field that's getting processed, but let me just um, check. If, um, op field st dot name equals NT Okay, let's see if that prints. All right, I'm gonna actually give it more of a unique name because I probably have a few of these. All right, cool. So that is, it is a set field. Um, so let's see, let's go to the process set field. Okay, finding instructions that are jump slash breaking to the new one we are modifying. These need to be modified to call the change instruction instead. Um, if was a replaced field. Basically, this is saying if the field was um, cogened, the sync fair, which it is going to be. Uh, don't modify the accessor method. That would be bad. Although, would it be bad? Hmm. Let me reopen this file. I just had an idea. Okay. <laughs> I think I just got an idea. Um, So you can't actually, oh, here it is. Uh, so here's the sync accessor. This is basically what's being called whenever you um, 
whatever you call this method here, it's it's calling this right here, specifically the set. So this should actually be a really easy fix um, now that I think about it. All right, so new original accessor, blah, blah, blah. Uh, what I'm going to do is basically modify the accessors and that should work in every single situation, I think. So let's, let's try that. Um, create hook, create read, initialize, create accessor. Here we go. Um, okay. Fun. So what I need to do is uh, is playing. Okay, so is that a, is that just a boolean? Okay, so that's actually a property. Um, so public bool is playing get only of course um, public static so uh, we're gonna leave this like so um, we're gonna do public int nt we're gonna do um, if application dot is playing empty equals whatever actually I gotta call another method don't I you know it's fine I don't really um, I don't think I need to do the full example here in this thing this thing basically generates IL for you um, it was not like that's something you can just drag and drop but it it definitely helps it shows you how it basically all goes together um, so I call it, if the value is false, I skip this logic because it says jump to IL000E, which is after the set field logic, so I'm skipping it. Um, easy enough. So I don't actually have a reference for the application that is playing. So let me, oh, I hate myself for doing this so much going to do it I hate it I'm doing it anyway but I, I hate myself internal method reference um, application is playing method ref ah that was painful dropping it in my junk drawer again okay <laughs> jeez all right, um, so I thought I had like a jump. Oh, okay, I do. I do have a jump type. Okay. So you could actually get the method by name. Hey Victor, how's it going? Like I can I could do um, method I'm looking for equals temp type dot get method and I could type in the name. Um, actually it's a property, but just an example, I could type in a name it is playing, but that's a string lookup and I do not like string lookups. Um, plus I think in order to do that, it probably has, it might use like a hash set or something, but I don't know. It's, it's still a string lookup and I don't like it. So instead I'm going to do, uh, for each property, I'm not actually sure what the type is. So let me just do this for each and temp type dot get, it is a property info. Okay. So I'm going to get the properties. Because I told you, I showed you that that was a property uh, instead of 
like adjustable lean because you can't set it. So this is if it's the one we're looking for. Um, and this is this is still a string lookup, but you know, I'm a damn idiot. Sorry I said that on, on live, but um, I just realized I could just do it this way. Do I have a temp MI up here? I do, perfect. So it's still a string lookup, um, but I'm looking it up by the actual method name, so I know it's right, which means I'm not going to make typos. Um, application is playing method ref equals uh, cogen session dot import reference temp mi. Okay, so what I did. Uh, for those not familiar with Cogen, is you need a reference to methods that you're calling. Um, I don't think you actually need the reference per se as you need the method definition. Uh, so think of think of like a definition as like a class and the reference as an instance of that class. So basically, I don't think you need the reference to call specifically, especially if it's a static. Um, because how it works is you load the actual instance reference and then you load the method name. Um, so the reference of the method is kind of not needed. But if that method exists outside of the assembly, um, so this is part of the Unity assembly and this is part of my user assembly. So if I try to inject code in here that uses the Unity assembly and, it's, and I don't import it like I did here, bad things happen. Um, so this is this is pretty important when it comes to code gen. Now that I have that, let's go ahead and make this happen. Um, let's work on the set method here. So we're setting the original field value, and then we're calling the um, set value for the initialized field. Um, this should be pretty easy to do. Let me just knock it out here. So I'm going to do instruction, um, ret instruction, which is a return, basically exit the method. Um, all methods have return types, even if you can't see it. Like void is the return type. It's just it doesn't really do anything. But you don't use it. Um, Processor.create opcode, opcodes, plural, ret. Um, Processor dot to add or insert. I guess it's an add. I'm basically creating the inch. No, it's not add. Um, append. I'm basically creating the instruction ahead of time and then adding it back where it was before. And the reason for that is because I'm going to do this here. Uh, processor dot emit opcodes dot call and if we go back to this as a reference um, this is what I mean how you get the idea you can see it's using a call and it's calling that method so I'm going to do call uh, cogen session <clears throat> cogen session dot general helper dot application is playing uh, method reference calling this right there and processor.emit br false oh, again opcodes br false uh, so you got br false and you have br false s which is like a short jump um, short jumps are more efficient but uh, they don't always work it depends how far in memory you're jumping I do know that however it is okay for this to be a short jump so I'm going to go ahead and do that and um, <clears throat> 
basically if the application is not running, so if the result is false, then I'm going to jump to the return instruction and it's going to skip this. That's it, um, that should do it. Let's see if there, oh, that's not good. Okay, um, my guess is, is that it's the code we just dropped in is null. So let me just open this up in notepad so I can see it better. Uh, created sync there, sync processor 616. Yep. So this is null. Why is that null? Because it didn't find the method, I guess. Uh, so let's go to the general helper. Generator helper, that's not general helper. So this is null, apparently. Um, I need to check why. I think it might be because it's getting, I don't know if it's because it's trying to get the full thing. Let me just try to do this. Oh, I know what it is now. I think. Well, one, it's not a freaking method. It's a property. And that's not going to work because it's a property. Uh, so. Okay. There we go. Uh, even though I meant to, yeah, so it's a get only. So I got the property and then I am trying to get the method from that property. So let's see if that worked. It should have worked. Great. Let's check out the code gen result again. Close that, rebuild it. Um, there you go. So that should fix the issue. I got to do a little more stuff um, that should fix the issue though. Let's go ahead and go up here and test it out. See if I can break it. Looks like I can't break it. That's fantastic. It's working. Gooby will be excited to hear this because he's been complaining about this for a while. Um, <laughs> he hasn't really been complaining, but he's brought it up quite a few times. So he'll be happy that's working. Now, the other thing I don't like is that this is, although a very small one, it's a performance impact. Um, so let's do this. Um, I gotta find some code. I don't know what it's under. So I can't remember what I called it. Let me just collapse everything here. It's under editor. I think it's under code stripping. Uh, okay, hold on. It's not under code stripping. Um, I have something under, I have something somewhere. Oh, oh, it's right there. Okay. Let me see if this is, So this is actually pro only code. Um, no, this isn't really anything most people understand. Um, universal tech, this is, this is definitely way more advanced stuff that takes a bit of practice to get used to.
And this isn't anything you have to worry about. This is all low level stuff. Um, this is me making code that writes code for you to make it easier. All right, so basically it's only going to include this code if it's not building, which means editor only. Um, and this is something I made. So let me go ahead and go here. And it's gonna, it's not a build, so it's going to show up or it should anyway. Okay, so it's, like I said, not a build, it's going to show up. Um, let's just inverse this, basically saying show up if it's not a build or don't show up if it's not a build. Okay, uh, so let's go back, reopen it. I basically inversed it, pretending it's quote unquote a build, even though it's not. Um, there we go. Now the check is gone, no performance loss. Perfect. Uh, so now let's just go put that back. And I think we need one for the get too because we didn't test the get, but I'm like 99% sure that it would cause the same problem. Oh no, the get just accesses the field. It doesn't actually uh, modify the set. So we don't need one for the get. So we are actually good to go. Um, that is one bug that I can consider complete. Let me back this up. Let me make sure I didn't leave any debug in there because I have a bad habit of doing that. Um, I'm just looking through my changes real quick. Okay, discard that change. Um, don't need these, don't need that. Again, I'm looking at fork my get client over here. Okay, uh, give me one second. Let's see, settings in, okay. Um, fixed null reference exception when setting a sync type through an editor callback during edit time. That is a long, lengthy change notes, I guess. But like I said, this was a very minor bug, um, but still it's good to have it, you know, fixed. So let's see, let me push that up. Oh, you're not gonna see these changes, by the way, because um, I have a developer Git, which for every like official release I push on the main Git, there's probably like 20 or so changes on the developer Git. And it's not like I'm trying to hide code from you or anything. The same code ultimately gets pushed up to the public uh, repo. It's just the public one has code that's, you know, neat and organized. And it's not, not left half broken as I'm working on it. So rather than like uh, have, you know, different trees and stuff like you typically would, or I mean branches, I should say, which I do have different branches in mine and, and stuff, but I just keep that on, on my special quote unquote developer Git and then just put, push up the changes to master. I personally like that a little bit more. Um, it's just a preference, doesn't really matter though. So let me actually go ahead and go real quick to um, this page here on a different window. And let me click that. And let me mark it as resolved. Um, resolved in 2.1.1. Closed with comment. And now if I click it, here we go, perfect. So you only have one bug left. <clears throat> um, uh, this is a feature I plan on adding in, which I still do, but this is the only bug left that is known. Um, we haven't really had any bugs for a reporter for a while, like no new bugs. So that's fantastic to me. Uh, like I said, this is only disrupting the visual displays. It's not actually like causing any breaks per se. Um, the prediction is still working properly with this. Even with this bug, it's just that sometimes there's a little bit of visual 
jitter depending on the situation and that's what um, this bug is about so I do need to fix it of course it is you can't launch production um, with this bug present but it's not the end of the world it's not something that's going to keep you from working on your project so I think I'm going to probably um, probably call it here I just want to check one thing Okay, so um, I already have a lot of changes in place for the next release, which isn't out yet. Um, I don't want to dive in too, to too many features before I push it out because I, I just don't want to add in new stuff that could potentially be problematic. I don't know if you saw the announcement in my server, um, but I was basically like, hey, you know, we're, we're super stable right now. The product is in a good place. Um, so now that we have like a stable release, I'm going to start adding in some risky features. <laughs> uh, that way, you know, if they don't work, people can just go right back to a stable release and it's not no big deal. But I do have a lot of really small enhancements that are uh, basically no risk that I've already added in. So I'm probably going to do just a few more like this one, um, this one right here, the teleport. Um, This one partially, probably. Probably gonna finish the interval feature and I'm probably going to uh, finish the exposed events before the next release. Not sure on that one, but definitely, definitely um, this and this. And there's already a ton of other little enhancements that are already in it. So I'm gonna do that and we're probably going to have a new release. Uh, what is today Friday yeah today's Friday and it takes usually one day to two days for unity to approve a new um, update but it only works on on weekdays so like if I push an update Friday morning like really early Friday morning um, it probably won't get approved until Monday so I'm not even going to bother pushing one to the asset store. I'll probably do a Git release sometime over the weekend, but I'm not going to do an asset store until Monday because it's pointless. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for today's stream. Um, got two bugs knocked out. That's pretty good. They weren't really that bad. Uh, went went pretty fluid. So thanks everyone for watching. Um, I am going to take a break and I'm going to go do plant things. I have like a little, <laughs> I don't know if I'd say nursery, but it's basically like a nursery. <laughs> I have, I probably have a good 90 to a hundred different unique plants in my backyard. And I have um, propagation trays. So I, I grow them and I sell them. And it, it's fun too. It's a good pastime whenever I need to take a break just to stay busy. Uh, downside is, is whenever I should be cleaning my house, I instead go propagate plants. So, <laughs> so yeah, um, I'm going to take off though. Thanks for watching and I'll probably be on later, but, um, uh, not at least for the next hour. All right. Take care everybody.